In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the insulation that you see behind me on my garage door. More specifically, what it is, where you can find it, how you can go about installing it, and at the end, I'm gonna share my opinions and answer some of the most common questions that I've received and really just give you an idea of the experience that I have with this product as this is the third garage that I've used it in. So the insulation product that you see behind me on this garage door is the Owens Corning garage door insulation kit. And each kit is designed for a single car garage door. And what I mean by that is in each one of the kits comes eight bats. And as you can see behind me, standard single car garage door has eight compartments and that is what each kit is designed for. Now, when you open up the box, it's just gonna come with a few different items. I already mentioned it's gonna come with eight of these bats. It's gonna come in four rolls and in each roll contains two bats. You're gonna get some plastic clips. Specifically, you see these plastic clips right here. They come in sets of two, one that will actually attach to the door and the other one that will actually hold it in place. You're gonna get some sticky adhesive that are used on those clips. You're gonna get some patch materials in the event that you ever needed to patch something. And then you're also gonna get a set of rubber gloves should you choose to wear those. Throughout this video and the install, you're gonna see that I am not wearing the gloves. That is my choice. For me personally, these don't irritate me enough to justify wearing the gloves. It's my choice. So everybody that's gonna comment and talk about how crazy and silly I am for doing that, I beat you to it but I'm sure you'll leave it in the comments section anyway. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do in this process is clean off the portion of the garage door that you're gonna be placing these plastic clips. And the way that I like to do that and that I found works best is using something like denatured alcohol or mineral spirits. Now, the reason why I like using one of those products is because once you spray it on and wipe it down, it tends to dry relatively quickly. Therefore, it gives me the ability to go through the installation process much faster. Now, this is an important step that you do not want to skip. The reason is, is because the small little pieces of adhesive that go on the back of those clips, they do have a tendency to want to fall off if the surface is dirty or if they get extremely hot over time. Now, later on, I'll talk about a solution to that, but that's typically more prominent to garage doors that are facing the sun for long periods of time. The door gets really hot, the pieces can come off. But what really helps is if the surface is clean, they will do a much better job of sticking there long term. Now for me personally, once I go ahead and wipe everything down and make sure that the areas that I'm putting those adhesive pieces is nice and clean, that's when I take an opportunity while it's drying to go ahead and prep the materials that are in my box. And the first thing that I like to do is pull out each one of the bat rolls, cut them open, and set them off to the side ready to be cut. Then what I like to do is go ahead and prep all of my clips that are gonna be going on the door. So each cavity requires two of those clips. So I take 16 of those clips and then I lay out each one of the adhesives on the table and I just like to go ahead and prep all of those right off the bat. Once I have all the adhesive on each one of those clips, I'll then just take them over and place two on each door. And I'm not measuring anything. It doesn't need to be perfect. Typically, I just try to eyeball these and get them as close to center as possible. I'm not looking for absolute perfection. If you wanna measure, you can. I'm just looking for center of the flat square portion of my garage door in this scenario. Now, once I have all of those in place, I cannot urge you enough to go through and actually measure the cavity. And I say that because the cavity sizes are going to be different, more specifically on a double garage door. You wanna make sure that you measure. So for a single car garage door, I'll measure both sides, make sure they're the same, and I'll cut all of my pieces. On a two car garage door, I will measure this first one, cut those four pieces, measure the next one, cut those four pieces, so on and so forth, because they're not gonna be the same every time. Now, once I have my measurements, then what I like to do is I like to cut them in pairs, just because it makes it a little bit faster. And to cut them, I will typically take some sort of material underneath, almost like a sacrificial surface that I don't mind cutting into. In this scenario, I just use a scrap piece of drywall. And what I also like to do is make sure that that piece that I'm using to cut on is a little bit longer than the bats. And the reason I do that is because I actually like to use the piece that I'm cutting on as my template. So I'll line up the edges of those two pieces on one edge and then I'll measure over and then I can put a mark on whatever that sacrificial piece is and I can just take my straight edge, put down some pressure, take a knife and just cut down the line. One thing that I've also found after doing this on a few different garages is that I do like to cut with the 
actual insulation portion, the pink portion facing upward. And the reason why I like that is because I find it gives a much cleaner cut on the exterior plastic or vinyl portion that you see right here. So when installing this product, I found that it's best to do everything in groups. If I'm gonna install the clips, I wanna make sure I do all the clips at one time. If I'm installing the insulation, I wanna do it all at once. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut everything at once and then go ahead and install it. Now, when installing these, you are gonna have some areas like you see right here that go back and have some sort of support basically. So you wanna make sure that your piece is long enough. You wanna get that measurement in there when you're cutting. And one thing that I forgot to mention, when I do cut these, I'll cut them about a half an inch to an inch longer than whatever the measurement is. And really what that does is it makes sure it goes in there nice and tight. And so when it's time to go ahead and install these, it's as simple as placing your bat in there and then tucking it into the corners. Myself, I like to start on the bottom just so it has something to hold and then work my way up on the sides. And then I like to tuck in the top. Once I have all of my panels in place, the only thing that's left to do is to go through and actually place the clips that will hold it in place as a retaining clip. And just to give you a better idea of just exactly how these clips work, one will go onto the garage door, the other one fits just like this, and that holds it in place. Now, obviously when we put these on the garage door, they're gonna be poking out a little bit and you're not gonna see them. So one of the steps that you have to take is that once you've got all your panels in place, then you're gonna go through and you're gonna cut a small slot in each one of them so that this piece that's on the garage door will actually protrude, giving you the ability to go ahead and clip in on the exterior portion. And the way that I like to do that is basically just by feeling around where it is. And I wanna make sure that the dispersion of the insulation is somewhat even on all sides before I put the clip on. And what I mean by that is I don't want it to be sagging on the bottom and then I clip it in in that orientation. So I'll just take my hands and I'll move it until it's nice and even. And then I'll just make a small little cut with a knife. And then you'll be able to push the clip that's on the garage door through, allowing you to then clip in the exterior piece. At that point, you are done. The installation process is extremely easy. And now I would like to share a couple of different uh, small things that people have commented on, have asked me about, um, have shared their negative experiences. So I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer on one specific panel, and we'll kind of just talk through some of those things. All right, so one of the first uh, tips that I would like to share, and one of the things that a lot of people have said to me or asked me is, does this stuff fall out? And the answer is, I have had it fall like once or twice on the very first garage, and I did have one corner fall in my previous garage, and here I've had no issues yet. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. One is the clips. And earlier I was telling you that, you know, the, the adhesive that they give you on these clips is it's not the greatest. It's, they're not the best. A very simple solution, if that ever happens, you just take the clip out and you get some good 3M double-sided tape and that will fix the problem forever. And there's also another part of this um, that I wanna discuss when it comes to the stuff falling out. So over here, you're not gonna have the issue. And the reason you're not gonna have the issue is because this actually goes back about two and a half, three inches. Uh, but on an area like this where it's butting up against something flat, you could have that issue. And what I mean by that is right here, right? So you will have that happen from time to time. The solution that I had in my previous shop was I just took white duct tape and just taped all around it. Now, with that being said, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that these rails right here are also clean. But those are the two solutions that will fix those problems. And before I mention that I like to cut these a little bit long, the reason why I like to cut them long is because that will actually help it not fall out because it gives a little bit of friction. Now, the other question that a lot of people have asked me is what's the R value? And I, I don't know off the top of my head. I wanna say it's something like nine. It's very low. But here's what I'm gonna tell you about the R value. It doesn't matter because if I put a nine R value in here, first of all, I don't, I don't think the cost is all that expensive. Price out an insulated garage door versus something like this, and this is substantially cheaper and it does work, it does do a good job. Yes, it has a low R value, but it's also relatively affordable. So if you're looking something that's gonna give you a lot more benefit, it's probably gonna cost a little bit more money. So to close this video out, I wanna address the one thing that I get asked more than anything, and that is, is it worth it? So I'm gonna share with you my experience now that I've bought this three times, okay? And I wanna make that very clear. This was never given to me by Owens Corning. I don't have any affiliation with Owens Corning. I've bought this product three times for three different garages. So my opinion is, yes, it works. Does that mean it's the best product on the market? No. Does it mean it's the end-all, be-all solution? No. 
There probably are better products out there. There probably are better choices that you could do, like getting an insulated garage door, which is gonna be far more effective. But guess what? All of those things are gonna be more expensive. So for the cost of $99 for a single car garage door and about an hour and a half of your time, do I think it's worth it for the results that I've seen in three different houses? Yes, again, it made an immediate significant difference to our master bedroom in Georgia. In the last shop, it was climate controlled and I had absolutely no problem keeping my shop at the proper temperature in not only the summertime, but the winter time as well. And by keeping it regulated, I'm talking like when it's five degrees outside, I could always keep my shop you know, between 65 and 72, whatever I had it set on. And one thing that I'm very interested in this shop is obviously I wanna make sure that I have good insulation and I wanna make sure that I have, you know, the climate control, which will be another video. I installed another Mr. Cool in the shop. Now that this is gonna be a climate controlled space that's fully insulated, having the master bedroom above, that's gonna help, you know, immensely, I would assume. And on that time will tell. But if you wanna see something funny, go to my Instagram, at Ben's Woodworking, and take a look at the comments on the post that I did on installing one of these. It's gotten a ton of views and it has elicited a lot, a lot of comments and back and forth. And some of the things that I mentioned in this video are those things, people telling me my springs are going to explode, that this is the most useless product in the world. I am not a professional when it comes to insulation. I am not a professional when it comes to garage doors. All I can speak is from my experience using this product. And what I will tell you is that undoubtedly, having this on your garage door is better than having nothing. Again, I just wanna make it clear. I'm not saying it's the best product on the market. I'm just telling you it's worked for me. And if I moved tomorrow, which, oh my God, I hope I do not move again anytime soon, I would 100% buy these again if I did not want to invest the money in insulated garage doors. So that is going to do it for this video. If for some reason there's something that I did not answer, please do not hesitate. Leave it down in the comment section below and I will respond there. Or if you want to go over to Instagram, you can find me there at Bents Woodworking. Shoot me a DM and I will answer as soon as I can. So until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.